Thank you very much. Hello, good afternoon. And I think uh, we can start now. So um, my name is Aminata and I will be moderating this panel. I just would like quickly to see if everybody is here. Uh, Jean, are you here? Can you maybe open uh, your video so that we see you? It's Jeannie and she's on. Yeah, she's every, everybody's on Aminata. Okay. Great. So let's just quickly uh, start and then we'll start with, with you, Jeannie. Uh, and I would like to start with a two minute presentation uh, from your project. So if you can quickly tell us your project and maybe uh, link it a little bit to the topic of this panel discussion, which is about automation and scalability and cloud use. So we'll start with you, Jeannie, please. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I represent Space Research Institute uh, uh, and our Ukrainian Geospatial Data Center, which is the main organization for geospatial data analysis in Ukraine. Um, a, is, sorry, let me let me interject. O Andre, it was actually supposed to be Jeannie um, starting, but we can't hear Jeannie. Sorry. For some reason. So let's let's continue with you, Andre. Please yeah, go ahead and I then Jeannie will yeah. come later. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, okay. So we have uh, realized uh, deep learning, uh, machine learning algorithm and use uh, during some maybe five or uh, six years cloud technologies for methods realizations. So we have experience to use satellite and other geospatial for example, in situ data for classification, land cover, not for only for Ukraine, but for different regions all over the world, for example, for US, for Argentina, for Europe, and for the Middle East. So we have some uh, useful for, from our point of view uh, methods, but uh, as ch main challenge, uh, maybe uh, I can propose for VDS may maybe, to realize some technical chat or uh, bot or something else for technical issue uh, discussing within VDS members. It's maybe very useful. Thank you at this moment. Seems Dini's video is on. Uh, uh, your mic Thank is on. You. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I we can enough? hear you. Yes, Jeannie, Thanks. welcome. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me today. I'm uh, from NASA at, uh, in, you know, in the U.S. at uh, Greenbelt, Maryland. I represent the Earth Observing System Data and Information System. Uh, we're the network organization for uh, 12 data centers, and Alex and uh, Bob are uh, one of our data centers uh, for socioeconomic data. Uh, I also have a colleague, Ron Laprian, on here who was at uh, the Gavarone meeting uh, last time. So uh, we're, uh, we appreciate being part of the World Data System and uh, having the opportunity to talk about uh, how we automate and scale. Uh, our issue is uh, mostly Earth science data, Earth science uh, data collected from satellites or airborne missions and a lot of ground validation types of activities. Uh, this data is growing. Our next satellite, which will be a synthetic aperture radar satellite, but will go up in partnership with uh, ISRO India, uh, will generate almost 50 petabytes of data a year. So we have to be able to scale from our current on-premise uh, data centers, of which there are 12 across the U.S. We're going to have to scale that up, and we're going to be using uh, cloud services to enable that scaling. We're also going to be able to uh, provide a whole new range of opportunities to our users for doing in, in situ uh, within the cloud, uh, various types of um, uh, services of subsetting, subsampling data sets, uh, doing spatial temporal uh, searching, and uh, actually bringing their uh, algorithms or their software to the data in the cloud. And so I think I'll stop there uh, and, you know, thank you, Aramina. 
Hermanada. Thank you. Uh, and uh, next we have Martina. Are you here? Yes. Please go ahead with your presentation. Yes, we can. Okay. So my name is Martina Stockhauser. I'm from the World Data Center for, for Climate, so a regular WDS member. And um, the WDC is hosted at the German Climate Computing Center. So we are also a service provider for the German climate research community. Um, the, another role that we have is that we are um, hosting the data distribution center for the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, together with two international partners. One was already mentioned, um, that is CEDAC, the Socioeconomic Data and Application Center, another regular member of the WDS, and with our UK partner, CEDAR, the Center for Environmental Data Analysis. So our World Data Center for Climate is hosting high volume climate data, mostly model data, so no satellite data, but model data. And the challenge we face is very similar to what um, Jean said, so the volume is increasing and we also have an international user community which is getting broader. So we get um, users outside of our target user community and that's also challenging. So in terms of cloud, which I haven't mentioned in the pre-recorded um, uh, talk, we are at the start. So we use cloud services for data exchange and to run virtual machines there um, for our services. But we haven't done the step into fully um, go into the cloud and host data as well as the um, scripts there. And the big challenge is our data format, NetCDFCF, which cannot be used in the cloud, but we have to move to a native cloud format there. So just let me mention one point, um, the inter, the collaborations that we have. So it's really essential for us to provide our data through different portals. So we are also engaged in the Earth System Grid Federation. And with that, I want to stop here. Thanks. Thank you, Martina. And finally, we have Jerry. Are you here? Yes, I am. Thank you, Amanata. I'm Jerry Carter and I'm the Director of Data Services at the Incorporated Research Institutions for Seismology. We operate a uh, seismological facility for the advancement of geoscience for the U.S. National Science Foundation. We're a repository of global seismological data and that spans from about 1970 to the present. And we have been in operation for about 35 years. We currently have about 670 terabytes of data in our repository. We export about 960 terabytes. We're expecting to do that this year. And we are getting in about 90 terabytes a year of, of data. Pretty soon we're gonna be uh, moving to the cloud. We're working with another repository for geodetic data and moving into the cloud uh, primarily because we have such large data repositories and we want to be closer to the high performance computing and high transaction computing that people will need to be able to process much of this data. Many of our data users want very small sets of data but many of them also want very large sets of data and so we have to have this scalable amount of processing power that everybody can use. Um, we automate many of our processes, as you can imagine, because we have such a large repository. And um, we also need to be able to scale because there are times when we may need to go in and compute things over our entire holdings. And it takes quite a bit of processing power to do that. So we sometimes want to be able to scale up, use lots of virtual machines to get a job done very quickly, and then scale back to perhaps regular operations. So thank you, Anamata. Thank you, Jerry. And uh, I would like just to remind everybody, if you have questions, please post them on the chat. And then if time allows us, maybe we'll take one or two questions at the end. 
Uh, but I wanted quickly to ask one question to the uh, panelists. Everybody has been talking about uh, scalability and then to scale, we may need to go to the cloud. Uh, now, is there any issue, any challenge also related to the cloud? For example, is security or data privacy an issue with the cloud more than when you manage it yourselves? Or is there any other things uh, you have been confronted when scaling and then going to the cloud? Does anybody want to take this question? Sure, I'll, I'll take that question. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Yes, please so I'll go, go ahead. First, Karen. Um, you know, in our case, uh, because we're a federal government uh, organization, we have to be very careful. We have to meet all the U.S. federal government rules associated with being in the cloud. So we have to uh, hire a large security team to vet um, our activities. We want to make sure that our large organization of some 600 programmers aren't going to put the keys uh, to the, you know, to getting into the data set to uh, overrun our account structures, to use up too much uh, money, you know, within the Amazon Web structures. So we have to develop uh, not only uh, security uh, of the data itself and its integrity, but also uh, security applied to the programmers who are, you know, developing software and systems on our data to make sure that they're acting in secure ways. So, yes. It uh, has taken, you know, a team of, you know, as many as nine, ten programmers to start our our move to the cloud. At this point, we have about uh, 15 petabytes of data in the cloud. Our entire collection uh, on premise is about 40 petabytes, and of course, in the future, we'll have, you know, the one satellite alone doing 50 petabytes a year. So we're looking at two, three hundred petabytes a year in the cloud. So it needs to be secure. Thanks, Jerry. Jerry, you uh, want to add something? Uh, well, yes, actually, actually, Jeannie's covered it very well. It's true that uh, security is definitely an issue, and we try to isolate our data from the um, from the public be, by having them go through web services. And but it is an extremely important issue that we don't we don't want uh, to lose our data and we we do of course as as all repositories should have they have a, a backup system and a and a disaster recovery plan but uh, that security is very important for us and i imagine everyone Thank you. I want to uh, take one question from the chat and then we, if we have time, we can pursue. So Doug is asking what approach are, are you taking to motivate your user community to bring the computer to the data in the cloud? Anybody want to comment on this question? It's in the chat from Doug. Okay. I'll, uh, I could, so, oh, here we go again, Jeannie. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, I'm sure Martina and Andre have uh, also ways that they're doing this, but in our case, uh, we have uh, uh, several people within our data centers like CDAC and like uh, the PODAC and all the other organizations in uh, science disciplines. And what they do is they target their user communities with the kinds of science uh, tools that they'll need to be able to operate in the cloud. So that might be Jupyter Notebooks that are specifically targeted to data sets. We also, you know, there's a question about formats of data. We have to look at different kinds of ways of making the data available in uh, cloud optimized formats. And so that's another area that we're also targeting. And um, maybe I have a one question for Martina. You just mentioned that uh, for you, Cloud, you are beginning to go to the cloud. Um, what about the cost? Is it, uh, is it more cost effective to go to the cloud than to manage your own data? Or uh, did you have any analysis for that? Um, yeah, thanks for the question. So the first part is that we use an in-house cloud solution. 
And for that, we have to invest, of course, in um, this technology change. So it is an in-house investment. And um, the funding is not there at the moment. So we have a very slow progress. So we ca I cannot give you any experience in that. So we are in the testing phase. But there is no way around making use of the cloud. And the, the big issue that we have and that is targeted more in our domain is really to have these native formats. And what we cannot afford is to store the data twice, having it for our local users in NetCDF on disk and having another copy in our in-house cloud because these are the same resources on which we work. Maybe one word to using an in-house um, solution, that's something which we in Germany, and I think there's a tendency in Europe that we go for open source solutions and don't want to be dependent on commercial providers. So I think there's a different approach in, in Europe than we have in the US. Uh, thank you, Martina. Andri, do you want to add something to that, uh, maybe uh, regarding your experience? Yeah, from my point of view, uh, we have experience to use in-house solutions starting from 2005. And from my point of view, cloud solutions much more effective, but uh, more expensive. But simply to, to them, we, have, we can use cloud solution without any additional cost for in-house infrastructure development. It's much more simpler than uh, to use cloud solutions from my point of view. But we have technical or technological issues. For example, for our data, geospatial data and product, we uh, plan and we started to use open data cube for example this technological solution is difficult quite difficult for deployment and for usage at the moment so we have another problems if we do it in our own resources Thank you, Andy. So maybe quickly, uh, what my take from this discussion is that uh, we have data, scale. we need to scale, we need to automate is a must. And uh, to scale, we need the use of cloud. However, security, data privacy is one of the key things we have to look at. Uh, cost maybe, uh, according to Andy, uh, it's maybe more costly to use the cloud, but there is no way around it. We have to go to the, with the cloud if we want to scale maybe. Um, and I want to stop here and then uh, to give the chance to everybody to have maybe one minute or one minute and a half conclusion on key messages you want to send and then we'll close it here. Uh, and then we'll start with you, uh, Jenny. Or Jean, I, I, sorry, I couldn't pronounce your name correctly. Alex told me though. Jean is fine. Jean, um, go ahead, please. Just in, uh, just in summary, uh, the Earth Observing System Data Information System, EOS DISC, has been around for a long time. We're located at earthdata.nasa.gov. You can find out all kinds of things about what we're doing there. Uh, we don't have all the answers. Uh, uh, our big question is, how do we retrain users to, you know, suddenly all the data is available. They don't have to go to 12 different locations for discipline-oriented science data. Um, lots to do here, and uh, we have a, a really exciting future, I think, going forward. We'll make lots of new earth science discoveries, um, you know, as we go forward. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about this. Thank you. Martina, you're next. Um, so the, the summary for us is that cloud usage is important and I think it's also important to collaborate on these issues. So we have es established collaborations within our climate domain, in the infrastructure domain, but to continue the discussions within or among WDS members on these specific topics would be really valuable to do. 
And one thought on if we make it easier for users to find our data and to access the data and to downscale the data, we will get new challenges why new users and coming with new questions to our data. So, well, we, we will have new challenges and um, face them in, in the next round here. Thank you. Thank you. Jaggi, please. Yeah, so I think that the main point that uh, one of the reasons that we're moving to the cloud is that we want to make sure that we get the data closer to where the, com the, the massive computational resources are. So effectively moving the compute to the data because we can't um, provide enough compute power in our, our own uh, infrastructure to do that. So, and the data, um, the needs of the community for doing this massive computational, um, needing these massive computational resources um, required that we move someplace. <laughs> so, uh, Jiggy, yes? Yes. Okay. You have finished? Yes. Okay, thank you. And Andre, please. Try Wow, sorry. <laughs> Not me. Yes, uh, I would like to, uh, to say thank you for all of us for successful uh, communication. It was very interesting. But from our point of view, it's very important to provide a needed level of automation, for example, at least for our uh, for our solution, because user communities uh, cannot use uh, any solutions without automation. There are, they are not experts in our domain. So, uh, from this point of view, maybe it makes sense to organize some series of uh, webinars dedicated to user community development, for example, and for automation tools, maybe to uh, formulate some classes of uh, program system or technological solutions which can be used by uh, VDS members uh, for uh, generic task at least. So it's very promising. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I think we are out of time, but I wanted just to quickly remind, uh, I think a suggestion from Martina that collaboration is key here. And maybe this discussion, we should try, try to have a way to continue the discussion and see how members who have more experience in this can, can collaborate and then discuss, share experience with uh, the rest of the members. And I think this is a very good suggestion. And then we heard also from Andre that uh, a way to have more tools more webinars, maybe sharing the tools uh, if possible could be uh, one way also to collaborate on this. Uh, so I think we're out of time. Uh, if you have any more questions, please please type them in the chat and then uh, we can still send the send those to the panelists. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the valuable contributions today and we look forward to continuing the discussion. Thank you. <laughs>